Department of Justice Bureau of Justice Assistance implemented the Coronavirus Emergency Supplemental Funding Program. Funds were allocated to the State of California and administered by the Board of State and Community Corrections. On March 5th of 2021, a total of $4 million $85,425 was awarded to the County of San Diego, with the Sheriff's Department serving as the lead agency, administering the funds for the county to respond to the needs of persons in custody and to provide support as persons transition out of custody. The Sheriff's Department seeks to use approximately $500,000 of the grant award to fund housing services. This is a request to amend existing contracts for interim housing and supportive services that were procured by the probation department to authorize the sheriff's department to provide referrals to housing services for persons leaving custody through the term of the grant program period, which ends on January 31st, 2022. Sheriff's Reentry Services Manager Patricia Sabalos will describe the planned uses of the grant funds including the proposal to add housing as a supportive services. Thank Patricia? You. Thank you. The CESF program is supported by federal funds from the Department, U.S. Department of Justice allocated through the California Board of State and Community Corrections. Authority to apply was approved by the board January 26th of 2021. The application was informed by a local advisory committee the grant period is March 31st, 2021 through January 31st, 2022. The funding is designed to meet the needs of persons in sheriff's facilities to address and mitigate the risk of COVID-19 in custody and in the community and to support their reentry needs. The BSCC approved the plan for additional uh, personal protective equipment in the facilities, including the support of the healthcare services training program. The vocational instructors from Grossmont Adult Education provide students training on best practices in preventing the spread of contagious disease, infectious waste, as well as handling of hazard waste, protective equipment, and chemical waste. Participants also learn about comprehensive cleaning services that meet all federal, state, and environmental health standards, such as those set by the CDC and OSHA. Participants who complete this program are eligible for entry-level positions in hotels, hospitals, and clinics. The Sheriff's Department is also creating an enhanced information technology system that will allow the Sheriff's Department to partner with community-based organizations to provide instruction and resources to persons in custody, including the dissemination of up-to-date information on COVID-19, such as best practices for prevention and information on accessing vaccinations. COVID-19 prevention and vaccine educational materials will be made available in multiple languages for maximal reach. The network will provide the opportunity to advance inmates' knowledge and expertise in the use of technology they will encounter in the community through the provision of trainings on how to use tablets and common software applications for the purpose of completing job applications, interviews, accessing telehealth, or community connections. The contract with Project InReach has also expanded to allow the contractor to serve more individuals during the grant period, incorporate COVID-19 education, and expand the target population to include individuals with mild to moderate Ill mental illness. And new contracts are being procured to provide COVID care kits to persons leaving custody, which will include toiletries, personal care items, and informational materials related to COVID-19. Another new contract invites a community-based organization to train individuals with criminal justice lived experience as peer reentry leaders with the necessary skills to lead individual or group discussion sessions on relevant topics for promoting successful reentry, including how and where to access services and to support individuals in their transition from detention or reentry facilities into the community and to share health messages related to preventing the spread of COVID-19. Sheriff's Department staff intends to use interim housing as a short-term housing option for people who meet this level of need. For individuals being referred to housing, Sheriff's staff will create an individualized reentry plan that addresses individual needs well, and will include linkages to employment services, community-based organizations uh, for ongoing support. While individuals are in interim housing, the providers will assist clients in accessing public assistance benefits within 30 days of entering housing. 
will provide safe, secure, and stable housing while supporting clients in achieving educational and or employment goals, physical and mental well-being, and positive connections to the community. Thank you, Patricia. Today's board letter seeks your approval to waive board policy A87 and authorize the director of the Department of Purchasing and Contracting to enter into negotiations with providers of the probation department's interim housing contracts issued pursuant to request for proposals 10404 and subject to successful negotiations and determination of a fair and reasonable price and approval of the sheriff to amend those contracts to add the sheriff's department as a party. Thank you, and this concludes our presentation. Thank you. Thank you to the Sheriff's Department and Public Safety for your presentation and work on this item. Let's hear from our public speakers, and then we'll come back to the board. I'd like to invite forward Audra Morgan. You'll have two minutes to address the board. Also note for the record that we received one e-comment on this item in opposition. Hello. Audra Morgan. So um, where does this money come from that you guys spend? Who, who, who do you get it from? The people? Right? But yet, you guys want to dictate where it goes. And then when we give you our opinion, you don't want to hear it. So I'm just wondering if it comes from us, at what point do we have a say on what happens? <clears throat> but what I'd like to do is address Tara, because, I mean, you're sitting here saying that we're a beacon of liberty, we need to protect the rights of these people, um, the Constitution, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, it's really hard because you guys are trampling on our rights every day, and the Constitution doesn't get postponed for a pandemic. But yet, when we come and try and say that, you know, we, you need to respect our rights, you're more worried about the immigration uh, problem and their rights, and that's a problem. I mean, but you were even an activist when you thought that Trump was uh, trampling on your civil rights and everybody's, and yet we're telling you that's what's going on, and you don't seem to care. That's a problem, because you're, you're fighting for other people, and yet we sit here and come and plead and plead and try and get meetings with you, different things like that, and I mean, you're spending all this money, uh, like it's, it's just, like you just find it on the floor. Oh my gosh, $5 million, what are we gonna spend it on? It's about time to start listening to the people and what they want. I mean, because you're spending all of these things. This is coronavirus funds, and it's going to people who are in prison. And I mean, what about the people that are outside of that, that come to you and ask for your help? That's why you ignore us, because you can't say anything. God's watching. And that concludes public comment on this item, Chair Fletcher. Well, all right, thank you. Uh, let me go to my colleague, Supervisor Desmond. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I guess just to respond to the public comment, uh, you know, this is federal dollars, that is your tax dollars, but it's federal dollars uh, through the uh, COVID emergency uh, supplemental funding. So what this, my, my question, I have a really question more of staff, and I'm really interested in the interim housing uh, for inmates because what, um, when we open up the crisis stabilization unit in Vista, one of the concerns of that community is the fact that there's a Vista, we have the Vista jail, that sometimes we just hand people, a, you know, a, people that are released from uh, the jails, we hand them a bus pass and see you later or we call them an Uber or something like that. So I just wanted to hear a little bit more about the interim housing. It, and is there a time limit or what's, what's give me some more information on the inter, interim housing. Because what we don't want to have happen are these inmates that they released, they did their time, but they go to, they go to the homeless camps. So they, they just, you know, they don't know where else, they get on a bus and where do they go? So I, I'd like to hear a little bit more about the interim housing. Thank you for that question, Supervisor Desmond. So this would, um allow purchasing and contracting to go into negotiations with about nine different contractors that probation contracts for um, for sober living homes. And so individuals who are exiting custody who may be in need of that would be able to uh, take advantage. And the grant period ends at the end of January 2022. So that would be the term of when that assistance would be available. And I'll ask Patricia if she has anything to add to that. 
the interim housing for our reentry population, what is this, you know, people who will be referred to this type of intervention and support are people who are already in line for either employment opportunities, they've completed vocational programs, um, they're gonna be connected to community providers, so it will provide them that level of support for potentially up to 90 days and even a little after to, to work through um, just that transition period of time when we see reentry as some of the most critical time to, to get people reconnected, to reunify, and to support them in that process. So technically, they could be in house, interim housing for up to 90 days, but the money runs out on January 2022. So that's coming up pretty quick here in a few months. Um, I don't know, I'm just very interested in this program. I'd like to maybe, you know, maybe come back later with some sort of a, a, a supplement or something like that to provide this interim housing because you know, a lot of our homeless people and people with behavioral health issues come out of the jails and, and this interim housing is very important to at least give them the, the hand up to uh, um, get back into housing as opposed, as opposed to just being going back to the streets. So thank you. Thank you, Supervisor Desmond. Uh, any other questions or comments from uh, from my colleagues? Uh, not seeing any, I'll make a motion to approve the recommendations in agenda item two. Is there a second? Second. All right, we have a motion by myself, second by Supervisor Anderson. Ask the clerk to please call the roll. Thank you, Supervisor Anderson. Aye. Supervisor Lawson-Reamer. Aye. Supervisor Desmond. Aye. Vice Chair Vargas. Vargas, aye. Chair Fletcher. Fletcher, aye. The motion passes unanimously with all supervisors being present and voting aye. We're now going to uh, move to agenda item number four, uh, appointment of Valerie Summers to retiree rehire position, uh, an item brought forward by our district attorney's office.